In this lesson we're going to look at what I would call basic applications for right triangles and then later in the course we'll be looking at some more advanced problems. So a common type of right triangle application is an angle of elevation or angle depression problem. And for an angle of elevation we think of our, our line of sight. So if you think of looking just straight forward so you've got a horizontal line, angle of elevation means you would be looking up at some object and that would be the angle that you would create. As opposed to an angle of depression, thinking of from the horizontal, you would be looking down at some object. So this would be your angle. And here would be your angle. So this first example involves an angle of elevation. Example three says, citing the top of a building, a surveyor measured the angle of elevation to be 22 degrees. The transit is 5 feet above the ground and 300 feet from the building. Find the building's height. So I first want to draw a picture to model this scenario. So we've got the height of a building which we don't know. We've got a surveyor standing 300 feet from the base and he's looking through a transit so which is 5 feet above the ground. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line here and the angle of elevation from that transit is looking up to the height of the building. So this little angle in here is 22 degrees. I know that the height of the transit he's looking through is 5 feet, so this distance right here is going to be 5 feet. So in order to find the height of the building, I've got to find this distance right here. And when I get that answer, then I can add that to 5 to get the height of the building. So let's just worry about the small triangle right here. So I'm going to redraw that triangle to get it away from the problem. It might be a little less cluttered. You certainly don't have to. And so I need to find x. This is a right triangle. I need to set up a relationship between the x, the 22 degrees, and the 300. That's the information I have. With respect to 22 degrees, the x is opposite and the 300 is adjacent. So I know that tangent, because of TOA, okay, tangent of 22 degrees is going to equal x over 300. So I can multiply each side by 300 degrees, uh, 300, excuse me, feet, or just 300. So I get x is equal to 300 times the tangent of 22 degrees. I'm going to evaluate this in my calculator. And remember, since in this question you haven't been asked to round to a specific place, I would ask you to just use common sense and choose a place to round to. And then as long as you round correctly to that place, that, that would be a correct answer. So I've already checked that my calculator is in degree mode. 300 times the tangent of 22 degrees equals 121.2. I'm going to round the height of this building to the nearest foot. So I'd say x is equal to 121. So if x is equal to 121, the height is equal to x plus 5, so that would be 121 plus 5. And so the height of the building is approximately 126 feet. Okay, example 4 is different in that in this problem we're trying to find an angle given a trig ratio as opposed to being given an angle and having to find the trig value. So the first thing I'm going to do, we'll read through the problem. A building that is 30 meters tall casts a shadow of 26 meters long. Find the angle of elevation to the sun to the nearest degree. So I'm first going to draw a picture. So we've got a 30 meter tall building a 26 meter long shadow and we want to look at the angle of elevation from the tip of this shadow to the sun. So I'm going to draw just a broken line and so the angle of elevation would be this angle right here. We want to find that angle and so as before we want to just draw this triangle. We're going to make an assumption that this is a right angle. We'll take the triangle with 
out of the problem to make it a little clearer to see. As before, we look for a relationship between the values that are given and our variable. And, ag and again, we've got a tangent problem. We've got opposite over adjacent. So we'll write the tangent of theta is equal to 30 over 26. We know we're looking for the angle whose tangent is 30 over 26, because so we'll use that inverse tangent button. So theta equals the inverse tangent, or the angle whose tangent is 30 over 26. Evaluate in our calculator. I am in degree mode. I want to hit second tan, 30 divided by 26. Close the parentheses, hit enter. I get approximately 49 degrees, and I'm rounding to the nearest degree. Something to think about here is the, the logic of your answer. And think about the fact that if you had an isosceles triangle where the shadow and the building were the same height, if that were the case, what would that angle have to be? Right? In an isosceles triangle, in an isosceles right triangle, this is 90 degrees, the other two angles have to add up to 90 to get 180. So this would have to be 45 degrees. So it, it makes sense to me that the angle of elevation um, is 49 degrees. It makes sense that it's close to 45. What I'd like you to do right now is pause the video and do practice problem uh, the, the practice problem below. And just remember that you're going to need other trigonometric functions to find the solution. Right, in this problem, we find, want to find the distance from point C to point A. We've got a tree. We've got an angle of elevation of 35 degrees to the top of the tree from point C. And we want to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So unlike the last two problems, which were tangent problems, they were opposite over adjacent, when we look at this distance from C to A, we're going to need to use a different trigonometric function. So let's call the distance from C to A, let's just label it X. So I have an angle, I have a right triangle, again, of course, a perfectly straight tree that's perpendicular to the ground. And we have, with respect to 35, we have the side opposite and we have the hypotenuse. And so when we think of opposite and hypotenuse, we think of the so, we think of sine opposite over hypotenuse. So. I will write down the sine of 35 degrees is equal to 30 feet over x. This is a little more challenging, but you can handle it. We multiply each side by x. So now I have x times the sine of 35 degrees equals 30. Divide each side by 35. When you divide each side by the sine of 35, you get x equals to 30 divided by the sine of 35. Let's open our calculator and evaluate. Again, I've checked. I'm still in degree mode. 30 divided by the sine of 35 degrees is equal to 52, approximately 52.3. And since we're in feet here, this is also feet. So it's common to use sine, cosine, and tangent when you have a right triangle. And if you just had those three, you could solve any part of this that you wanted to. But notice here, this time it required us a little more work because the x ended up in a denominator. We had to multiply through by the variable. We had an extra step. There is another relationship between 35, 30, and the x, and that would be cosecant. I know that the cosecant of 35 degrees well, if the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. And so this would be x over 30 feet. So I'd multiply both sides by 30. And doing that would give me x equals 30 times the cosecant of 35. We'll evaluate this on our calculator. And again, it's going to come out to be the same value because you've got 30 times the cosecant, but we don't have a cosecant button, so we'd have to take 1 divided by the cosecant of 35, which would be 30 divided by the sine of 30 divided by the sine 
of 35 degrees. So we're essentially we're typing the same exact thing in our calculator, 35, and we're getting the same answer, but the algebra is slightly easier. We still get 52.3. But it's nice to know you have a choice as to which trig function that you'd like to use.